Hey guys, welcome to another video for the Redmi K20 Pro or Mi 90 Pro, whatever you want to call it. Today we are talking about a new ROM which we have covered for other devices on this particular channel, but it is available officially. It is known to be stable and it is Android 11. So that's a great combination and we're going to have a look at how to install it. And later, if I like the first impressions, I can probably do a live stream with it and probably do a gaming review as well. But before we get into all of that, if you haven't already, please subscribe and hit the notification bell icon so that you get notified every time I upload a video. In the description of each video, you will find a link to our Telegram community, Instagram, Facebook and Twitter. You can join us on all social media. And last but not least, if you think the hard work is worth the effort, please click on the join button and support the channel. Now, without further ado, hello awesome people. Welcome to Smartphone Tutorials. My name is Kalash. Let's get going. All right, so first things first, what does it say? Octavi OS stable 2.0, Android 11 updated on 18th of February, so fairly, fairly recent. You do have the download link and everything else. You do have a device changelog. It does say included Vanced Manager, added Gcam, Go Fixed, ANX Portrait, and included R version. That's great. Added a setting to calibrate the motor. That's great. If the front camera gets stuck, added sound lips from OnePlus 7, reintroducing Race to Wake, implement pop up motor calibration, all sorts of pop up sounds, Redfin's February fingerprint for easy peasy safety net. SBI Yono works on this ROM, that's amazing, bumped up vendor requirements. Now, I'll have to tell you guys, the amount of change log is making this build really, really interesting for me because they've done a lot of focus on the camera and the fingerprint and they have also done a lot of focus on the safety, that is banking applications. So let me tell you what all you will need. For obvious reasons, you will need a Redmi K20 Pro, which does have more than 50% battery, an unlocked bootloader and a custom recovery installed. Now, once you have all of this, make sure you have backed up all your data from the internal storage because the way we flash ROMs, we will be wiping everything on the internal storage and then we will copy files by connecting it to a computer and then we will go ahead and flash it. Now, what all files will you need? Well, in my knowledge, if you see over here, say if you go to download, open the link. So you do have two versions. We are going to flash the G apps version. All right. So you can use the latest vendor firmware that is 12.0.4.0. And you will also need the ROM. And if you're flashing the vanilla version, then G apps. And if you want root access, then Majisk. And if you want to stay decrypted, then DFE. But in this case, we're just going to flash the firmware and the ROM, and then we'll call it a day. So first things first, let's actually boot into recovery advanced recovery over here so we are already de decrypted so what you need to do is manage partitions data tick mark format data type in yes okay now go to reboot and select recovery all right now we're going to wipe everything including internal storage now it's not necessary for you to do this every time but i believe in a clean clean flash and that's what i do in each and every install and preview video so now that everything is wiped we're going to connect the phone to the computer and we'll copy the two files that we're going to flash all right so both the files are now copied to the phone we will go to the install menu and select the vendor add more zips select the rom flash now remember, you need root access, you need to flash Majisk, you need to stay decrypted, you do need to flash DFE. There are some ROMs which will not boot if you don't flash Majisk and DFE like Nasantara. Now, while this is flashing, there is a small thing that I'd like to share. Uh, there is some bug on Nasantara OS which doesn't allow screencasting to work at all. If Even if you use USB debugging or if you use wireless screen mirroring. That is the reason the iPhone 11 stream that you see on the channel was supposed to be a Nasantara stream. But uh, yeah, that did not happen. So I am going to shoot a gaming review of that OS and that will be out soon. All right, now as you can see, everything has been flashed. So we will go ahead and wipe cache and reboot system. Now, of course, this is a first boot. So it'll take anywhere between one to two minutes. But considering that the device has a Snapdragon 850 Fi and we are flashing a custom ROM, yeah, it'll boot relatively fast. And uh, yeah, the boot animation looks great as well. So let's wait for it to boot up. We'll skip the setup menu and then we'll have a look at the ROM. 
All right, so just like that, we're in the home screen and the first impressions are pretty, pretty good. First of all, their default wallpaper looks great. The launcher is very, very pixel-esque and a very, very basic launcher. You do have the Google feed to the left. So if you actually go to home settings and about, this actually looks like the official Android 11 launcher, like the Pixel Experience launcher. You do have a ton of options over here. And if you go to settings, it says, hello owner, about. You go to Android version. You do have, wow, they've done a lot of work on this OS. I'm definitely going to be using it as my primary this weekend and see how it goes because I would love to review it. The way they have, you know, set up the layout and stuff, it looks really, really great. At least they've done some hard work in making it look great is what I can say. Now, the settings menu as well looks pretty, pretty slick. But before we get into that, you do have, yes. Now that's what I have always been saying in, in Poco X2 video as well, I said it. If you're going to give me ANX camera and include it in the ROM as well as a default camera application, that makes things amazing. So the front camera in portrait mode works absolutely fine for all of those who are worried about it. And also about the video mode. Let's see what options we have. We have 1080p 30. Yeah, we don't have 1080p 60. That's the front camera. Now, let's look at the rear camera here. Yeah, you do have 4K 60 FPS in the rear camera. So that's pretty amazing. Uh, not a ton of options over here. You, are, you do have YouTube advanced. Please don't use it. We get paid because of ads. So let's see what the customization says. It says Octavi Lab over here. Wow, some neat animation there. Guys, I have to tell you, this looks like a very, very promising ROM. Okay, I'm definitely going to do a full fledged review on this. I'm going to use this for a couple of days. I'm install PUBG, play on it, do a live stream, do a gaming review and stuff. But the initial impressions of Octavio is official for the K20 Pro. I mean, even even look at the animation. It's so subtle and so beautiful. They've paid attention to each and every detail and this ROM deserves your attention. So kudos to Octavio team. They've done a brilliant job with the software. Now I'm going to use it, but this was a quick and easy way of how to install this ROM and what are the initial impressions. And I think you should give it a try. If you are someone who loves custom ROM, I think you should definitely give it a try. Let me know in the comment section. What did you think about this video until the next one? This is Kalash signing off at Smartphone Tutorials. Keep smiling. Take care. Goodbye.